How's it going? Jeff here from Deep Cycle Battery San Diego. I've been really wanting to make this video for a long time and I'm kind of excited I'm finally going to do it. Today we're going to talk to you about choosing a golf cart battery that matches your golf cart. When I say that, I mean picking a battery that matches the application. Um, a lot of people sometimes will buy an inexpensive uh, Costco 6 volt battery and they'll put it in the an application and it fails very fast and they just think and they wrongly assume that all batteries are the same why not just get the cheapest battery out there I want you to understand that if you have a battery that's down at the river or compared to a battery that you are I'm sorry a golf cart you have down at the river or compared to a golf cart you have in a commercial application that's hauling trash cans you need a very different battery from those two between Trojan Battery Company and Crown Battery Company two of two domestically made batteries from the 1920s they have what you need to fit the bill whether it be inexpensive or a commercial application so let's dive right into the, low, the least expensive battery uh, at the time of this video the Costco battery at roughly is about $89 made in Mexico and um, it because I have the pile of junk batteries I can see that it only lasts a couple of years um, in all fairness to the battery we don't know what kind of life or application it was put into but if you need at the time of this video if you need an inexpensive battery Trojan has a $80 6 volt 210 amp hour battery we call the Trojan Pacer now this battery is produced in the United States I believe it's in California and Trojan does an amazing job with this battery and the reason why I like it so much is I don't see this battery come back from for warranty now we always interview customers to find out what is the application. We don't want to put this battery into an application that's let's say a street legal golf cart down at Pacific Beach or La Jolla. Um, it's not really made for that. It's more of a recreational, occasional use battery. It does also work excellent though in, in RV applications. So it's right now at the video, it, it's $80 with the trade-in. It is made in the United States. You're gonna use distilled water to fill it. And then for charging, I'm gonna to talk to you that on the back side of this video. The flagship of the Trojan battery company is the Trojan T105, 225 amp hours, just a very rock solid battery. You can see it has the three staggered caps that are hinged, that's called the plus model. Um, this battery is very reliable, so if you did have a street legal golf cart um, or a golf cart and you live on a golf course and you're, you're playing 18 rounds or more every day, this is going to be a really great battery. And I'm going to talk to you again about charging this and letting this battery cool before you use it. If you have a commercial application, let's say you have a tailor done and you're taking, you're dragging dumpsters. And the reason why I use that example is I've seen that. And the flatbed tailor done was dragging dumpsters down uh, at a uh, commercial application. And the batteries that we had sold them would just fail very fast. You're going to need a heavier plate and a heavier amp hour battery. And that's what I love about the Crown Battery Company. This is a particular model, it's a 260 amp hour, very robust, um, engineered and robotically welded uh, battery made in Ohio. Now Crown's a company you probably haven't heard about too much here in the West Coast, it's a giant East Coast operation. They are out here now, uh, but between Trojan and Crown, they're my two favorite domestically made batteries. So if you have, again, if you have a, ro a robust commercial application, definitely use the Crown battery. They also have lower level models too that are excellent. Trojan's been, if you look at a golf course, you'll see that Trojan is trusted in most local golf courses. Now, when you charge your batteries, whether it be the Crown or the Trojan model, let's talk to you about charging. It's very important that you understand that chargers have changed uh, in the, er, in the, Years ago, you would find yourself with, uh, I don't want this table to tip, you'd find yourself with a charger that maybe looked like this. It was a silver or black box, super heavy, full of copper, and you plug in the, you plug in your, uh, this one actually is made for the uh, RXV. You plug in your golf cart, whether it be 36 volt or 48 volt, and the charger would take six to eight hours, and the batteries would get fully charged. The light would go green. Well, nowadays, we're starting to see this kind of stuff show up on the market. So I want to warn you, when you see a little box like this and it has the cooling fins, that's the heat sink, I want you to understand the challenges that batteries are having today. People always ask us, what happened to batteries? They used to last long. They, they, they're just you know, piece of crap nowadays. They're, they're not. Battery companies are doing a, a, really, a better job of making batteries. The grid that these Trojan and Crown build are excellent compared to what Costco is putting out. The grid is everything. And these guys are using um, more expensive grid. And the reason why I say is because the grid is probably the, one of the most expensive components to build in the battery. That's where your antimony lives, uh, is in the grid. When you use a high frequency charger like this, you'll notice if you have one that the, uh, the golf cart companies are sending it as the OE. 
I don't want you to wrongly mistake when these chargers, these high frequency little bread boxes here go green, you assume that that battery is 100% charged. It is not necessarily. That just means the charger has turned off and it's done charging. The way you do that to verify is I recommend that if you have a flooded lead cell, uh, flooded lead acid battery in a golf cart, buy yourself a $12 cheap hydrometer. If you have a charger like this and you notice that your range keeps diminishing and diminishing, but the charger keeps telling the batteries are fully charged, do a hydrometer sample in your batteries and the, the, the needle on the hydrometer will tell you if the batteries are fully charged or not. If this is going green and the chart and the hydrometer is not telling the batteries are fully charged, you have a disconnect. This is not getting the job done. And why is that? In all fairness to these chargers, they try to do a good job, but if you open up these chargers, what you're gonna find is a green computer board. And what happens when electronics get hot? We all know they diminish in, uh, in, um, in um, output. So I hope that helps you. I'm sorry the phone's ringing. Um, someone's calling early. Battery chargers nowadays, they're all not made equal. And uh, that's my tip for the day. Take care and talk to you soon.